Um, this video is by Modern Girls. G-U-R-L-S, I think I'm getting that right. I don't want to not credit anyone. And this is just a response to this video about this ridiculous show that really two seasons was just far too long. But yeah, you know, you can't tell Hollywood anything. Who wanted this reboot? No one. Why did the Gossip Girl revival fail? On January 19th, 2023, it was announced that HBO Max would be canceling their Gossip Girl revival after only two seasons, a decision that I hardly found to be a surprise considering the public's less than stellar reaction to the series. Now set in the 2020s, the revival featured an entirely new cast of characters, but was still set in the same continuity as the original series. The revival set out to highlight how things had changed in the years since the original show's conclusion back in 2013, not only in regard to social media, privacy, and fame, but also the television landscape itself, with the show featuring a more diverse cast, politically correct messaging, and adult content. While this wasn't the worst idea in the world, the show struggled to find its footing and was utterly unable to step out of the shadow of its predecessor. And with its cancellation, it's fated to disappear into the ever-growing ash heap of other failed revivals, reboots, and remakes. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Gossip Girl revival and the many missteps that led to its early cancellation. Obviously, there will be spoilers for the entire franchise. Let's get into it. Gossip Girl first began as a series of young adult novels written by Cecily Von Zegazer, with the first installment being released in April 2002. The book followed the scandalous exploits of a group of privileged teenagers who attended an elite private school on the Upper East Side, with said exploits being documented and discussed online via the popular anonymous blogger Gossip Girl. After 11 books, the series finally reached its conclusion in 2007, with the main characters graduating from high school and moving on to other pursuits. The books received both positive and negative attention. On the positive side of things, it was praised for getting more teenagers into reading, but criticisms were directed at its inclusion of profanity, drug use, and sex acts, no which shit. people considered to be inappropriate for its target audience, with author Naomi Wolf saying of the series, quote, this is not the frank sexual exploration found in a Judy Bloom novel, but teenage sexuality via Juicy Couture, blasé and entirely commodified. The book <laughs> series was initially supposed to be adapted into a film starring Lindsay Lohan. Oh God! But the project struggled to get off the ground. <laughs> Thank it was God later that didn't happen. No Savage offense to Lindsay and Josh Schwartz Lohan. for television. Schwartz, who had created the 2003 teen drama The O.C., took Gossip Girl's direction for the CW. But considering the sub, by the way. It's the same show as The O.C. It's the same show, even Rachel Bilson and Leighton, Leighton Meester are basically the same person, the same character. And in real life, Leighton Meester is married to, um, what's his name, Adam, Adam, the same guy who used to date Rachel Bilson and who was also in The O.C. So <laughs> it's basically the same show, the same exact show. Subject matter in the books, this wasn't an odd decision. The television production wholly embraced the controversial material of the books, and even used its scandalous reputation to its benefit, with ads for the TV series including quotes about how inappropriate it was, accompanied by steamy photos of its young cast. Euphoria? They ran so you could walk. Airing from 2007 to 2013, the show was loosely inspired by the novels featuring many of the same characters but changing their personalities and storylines as necessary, with Chuck Bass, Dan and Jenny Humphrey, and Vanessa Abrams getting significantly more attention than they had originally. Some notable plot points that differ between the book series and the TV show is that with teen dramas seeing lasting success over the past two decades, combined with Hollywood's recent fascination with revivals and reboots, it's hardly a surprise that in 2021, Gossip Girl was pushed back into that the spotlight and down our throats. Now I have to admit that right from the start, the odds weren't in Gossip Girl's favor, as it was often compared to other TV show reboots and revivals like Charmed, Fuller House, and Dynasty. But unlike what some could of these go other wrong? shows, I truly think that the Gossip Girl revival had potential. It just failed to live up to it. In case you're unfamiliar with the revival storyline and characters, allow me to briefly summarize what happens. 
Zoya Lott is a new student at Constance who is secretly the half-sister of Instagram influencer and it girl Julian Calloway. Julian's closest friends are Audrey Hope, Luna Law, Max Wolf, Aki Menzies, and Monet Dehan. Audrey and Aki are dating, but there's sexual tension between them and Max, who is the pansexual playboy of the group. <laughs> Monet and Luna are Julian's lackeys, in a sense, with Monet being her stylist and Luna her photographer, but the two are also the bullies of the group. After one of the school's teachers is fired at their privileged students' insistence, the rest of the faculty, led by Kate Keller, decide to teach them all a lesson and restart Gossip Girl on social media to get even. Julian attempts to bring Zoya into her circle, but the rest of her friends balk at the idea. Gossip Girl begins sharing information about the friend group, and soon enough they all begin to turn on each other. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, that's part of the problem. One issue I had with the revival is that it didn't bother bringing anything new to the table. The only notable differences from the original are its diversity, political messaging, and pop culture. Okay, right there, there is a problem. There seems to be this idea with these woke creators that all you need is diversity. Diversity can substitute good storylines and interest. So, you have an old franchise that's stale? I know, let's inject it with diversity, and that fixes the problem. They again always fail to realize that the least interesting aspect of a person is that person's identity. No joke. Culture references. So for the most part, if you've seen one, then you've seen the other. Compare that to 2022's Pretty Little Liars Original Sin. Unlike other shows in the Pretty Little Liars... Plotlines that would be addressed in a very different manner to in the wrong ways coming across as disingenuous and patronizing. It often we'll feels as though it's patting itself on the back for being so progressive and woke, when in actuality, it's addressing these issues in a very shallow and surface level manner. The <laughs> you can't tell them anything. The most important thing is that it's woke. You mean it's patronizing and condescending then wo that woke people are patronizing and condescending that for them franchises exist to be preached uh, as, as pulpits for, for them to preach their woke messages from? I am shocked. The original show is sometimes hard to watch in retrospect because it includes plot lines that would be addressed in a very different manner today. The reboot goes out of its way to repeat these scenarios but through a 2020s lens by condemning the behavior. This would be great if it weren't for the fact that many of the people involved with the original production, therefore the ones who gave permission for those things in the first place, are the same ones now attempting to be like, oh see, we're so much better than that show. The original characters were toxic and terrible, but at least they weren't lecturing each other and the audience about their ethical and moral superiority. These yeah, so you see, what has happened in the last, I would say, six years is that many people have become woke. This includes the original creators. Now, there's an argument to made that this is just a natural growth or it's just a money thing. They're doing it because that's where the money is. That's what they're expected to do. They don't want to get canceled. This is the only way to get shows made these days if you insert a woke message on it. But, as I've said about diversity, it needs to make sense to the context. If it doesn't make sense, that's how you know it's woke diversity, because it makes little or no sense to the context whatsoever. These new, equally wealthy characters are constantly trying to prove that they're progressive, but the son of a multi-millionaire attempting to be one of the people isn't interesting. It's condescending, like Jeff Bezos thanking his overworked and underpaid employees for helping him get to outer space. Maybe it's just me, but I don't need relatable rich people who go, boo-hoo, it's not my fault my daddy is a millionaire. I want rich people who are so horrible that there's no way of excusing their behavior, but they manage to weasel their way out of situations purely because they're well off and privileged. Show me assholes with no redeemable qualities, who epitomize the selfishness and shallowness of the upper class, then knock them down from their thrones. 
You could also show how two-faced and malicious they were by having them be vocal about these causes in public, posting on Instagram, going to protests, etc., but in private have them talk about how they don't believe in these issues at all, which wouldn't be far off from the real 1% who are similarly all talk and no action. Okay, she has a point here. She has a point. But here is why that doesn't work. Woke. You see, in this show, it's mainly about diversity. The cast is very, very diverse. And one of the mandates of woke diversity is you cannot have diverse individuals be bad people. This means even though these individuals are rich and they should behave like rich arseholes, you can't have them behave like bad people because they're racially and gender and sexuality diverse. And that means it's a no-no. So the rich bitchy girl cannot be a rich bitchy girl if she's played by a bald black chick. And what's with these bald black bullies? Anyway, who are being touted as queen bees in these TV shows. Is that realistic? bald black chick is the baddest bitch and no one you know says bitch you are bald take a step back but anyway I'll, I'll get to that in a second but this is the problem of where woke diversity makes no sense to the story you see a similar thing in bridgerton what i've said in the past is if you want to excuse a lot of you know so-called anti-woke things <laughs> things like uh, privilege and, and power and hegemony and, and you know, wealth and, and you know, unearned um, opulence. If you want to excuse those things, just make them diverse. You see that with Bridgerton. The life of the aristocrats is basically glorified because it's diverse. It's okay if it's diverse. No one has to think about it. These rich people are trying to do the same thing. They are diverse, so their wealth and privilege and all that stuff ultimately means nothing. You can justify or excuse or ignore those things if you just make them diverse. Of course, if everyone was white, then it would be a problem. But if it's diverse, then it's sort of okay. That sort of direction is why series like Succession and White Lotus have been so successful. By emphasizing these toxic traits and their privilege, it would make the differences between these hyper-rich characters and those that are less well-off, like Zoya or the teachers, more stark. Now, I don't think anyone would deny that the revival is more racially and sexually diverse than its predecessor, but I personally don't think we should be handing thing. out brownie points for something that should be considered the bare minimum, especially <laughs> when these diverse oh, characters it's not are the bare so minimum one for note, the woke people. being nothing more than a handful of random quirks and traits in a sweater vest. According to these woke creators, that's all you need. Diversity, your identity, is what makes you unique and special and important. You don't need any actual character traits. You just need to be the pansexual guy. You just need to be the bald black girl. That's all you need. You, you just need to be trans. You don't need an actual personality. With their actions having such little reasoning behind them that you're left wondering how they got to that conclusion in the first place. The characters in the original series were by no means perfect, but at least they had personalities that were unique to them and were easily identifiable. Sure, Serena Vanderwoodson may- Here's the thing, again, what I just said, wokeness is not about individual personalities or people, it's about racial identity, which is used as a message. So when you have woke casting, the most important thing is the message. It's what they're supposed to represent. It's not who they are as people, as individuals. This is one of the major factors. It's the message that's important. It's the representation that's important. It's not writing interesting, unique characters people with personality that you can care about. It's about making sure that they are representative. Made terrible choices when it came to men. But we understand that this is because the character is both a hopeless romantic and a cynic, something which is a direct result of seeing her mother's many failed relationships. So no matter how many times Serena falls for the wrong guy or screws things up with the right one, it's believable. 
Blair Waldorf could have easily been nothing more than the bitchy queen bee, but early on in the series it's made clear that her arrogance is just a cover for her insecurities, which paves the way for most of the characters' decisions. Chuck Bass is a self-centered sociopath who is willing to do or say anything as long as it gets him what he wants, which serves as the inspiration for his more manipulative and malicious it's behavior. Chuck Bass, bitch. Jenny Humphrey started off as a sweet and submissive girl with a desire for popularity, before eventually becoming cold and calculating as a direct response to how people had treated her in the past. The main cast in the Revival series are sorely missing these developed personalities, <laughs> which results in lackluster storylines for the lot of them. And they're so uninteresting that I'm often left wondering why anyone would spend the time gossiping about them to begin with. It's the message. They're interesting because they're pansexual, because they're diverse. It's not because they have any interesting personalities. It's just, well, you know, white people are gossiping about so let's insert these diverse people to be gossiped about not failing to recognize why those white people were gossiped about because they were interesting characters with personalities it wasn't simply because they were white because Aki's entire personality is that he's shy and kind of dumb, he mainly serves as comic relief, and he spends the series struggling to express his feelings and doing whatever other people tell him to do. There's nothing wrong with a more introverted character, but we're never given any insight into why he acts this way. As for Audrey, a large part of her character is her nonchalance, which is an incredibly un- who doesn't care about anything, the audience doesn't care about her. As for Obi and Max, they're such bland By the way, that's one of the first um, things you learn about writing. If your character doesn't care about anything and is submissive in her own story, then the audience is not going to care either. I know it's a tough lesson I had to learn as a writer, like how to create non-bland characters, how to create characters who are agents in their own stories, as opposed to who are being dragged along by the story itself that I don't even know if I could describe Ooh, I them as guy. anything besides whiny and horny. I think he played Dracula. I was especially disappointed with the show's depiction of Luna. Film. While I appreciate that they didn't make her entire storyline about her trans identity, we oh, learn very this person little is about trans. her character in the of first course. season. And her sassy personality isn't particularly unique in the grand scheme of things. Julian is supposed to be the show's queen bee, but you never buy it for a minute. <laughs> So, okay, this is the point I mentioned, you know, if you saw my Wednesday video, and if you saw the point I made earlier about there's this obsession with making bald, black, blackish, blackish women, like queen bees in these YA TV shows, and I don't know what's behind it. You know, in, in Wednesday, they complained about it, the black people complained about it, because they're like, why are all the black kids bullies? There's an argument to be made there, but that's not the point. But I'm just curious. It's not believable that these bald black chicks are the queen bees of their school. Because again, in, in real life, no one's going to... What power is she going to have? She's going to be like, yeah, I'm the queen bee. And someone's going to be like, you're bald. Take several seats back. And this would happen in any school, anywhere, regardless of the demographic. So I don't understand. I, I think this is part of the obsession with you know, preaching to the audience and telling them what they should find interesting and accepting as opposed to what people legitimately find interesting and accepting. This person would not be any queen bee in any school unless she is surrounded by people who are willing to pummel people on her behalf. No one is going to be like, yeah, no one is going to allow themselves to be bullied by a bald chick. So <laughs> this is just super weird. And this is, again, this Wednesday where they have these shaved-headed black women who are just you're supposed to believe they're the prettiest most popular loved and worshipped people in these schools and it's just not believable come at me it's just not believable while she's somewhat vain and arrogant she is none of the bite of Blair Waldorf or Jenny Humphrey and lets everyone else do her dirty work for her the only thing that makes her somewhat unique compared to the rest of her peers is that she's an Instagram influencer, <laughs> which course. I'm sorry is just not a character trait that lends itself to making someone look cool, especially when she's plugging bizarre products. Also, a true queen bee is someone who has total control over her subjects. She wouldn't have to scheme, she'd just tell them how it is. 
but instead Julian needs other people to pick out her outfits. She falls victim to simple manipulation, and she cries whenever she has to do something mean. Oh, oh. Mean. She She's cries like whenever she has to do something mean. Okay. This is this sounds very contradictory of this character. She's supposed to be a queen bee, but she's actually just really, really nice. But she presents as a mean Regina George character. This doesn't work. It doesn't work because, again, here's where the contradiction with these characters come from. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. It's either going to be one or the other. It's, it's going to be one or the other. It's either she's mean or she's, she's really nice pretending to be mean because she wants to be liked or or she wants people to think that she's a queen bee but she's really really nice or she's gonna so so she she acts really really nice but in fact she's really really mean or she's really really mean it's gonna be one or the other it, it, it can't be both but apparently they're doing both she's supposed to be a queen bee queen bees are not by default nice they're regina george's of the world they are by default mean but i have to wonder again if this isn't tied to the woke mandate that you cannot have a diverse person being bad the only people who are allowed to be portrayed as bad people are in fact white people especially heterosexual white people so you can have blair world uh blair wald waldorf you can have blair wald waldorf being a badass bitch because she's white and heterosexual but you cannot have a black bald chick being evil because then you're gonna face criticism again see the wednesday adams series you cannot have her being a bad chick but then you're casting her in the blair waldorf role of the queen bee so it doesn't work it doesn't work and this again is where woke casting makes no sense because again it, it doesn't work if you cannot since woke casting requires that these people just be representative and therefore and they cannot be portrayed as bad you cannot have them play unique characters. You cannot have them play according to the role she's supposed to play, which is the rich bitch, the queen bee, because that role requires her to be a bad person. And you cannot have a bald black woman portraying a bully and a bad person. So you get this contradiction where she is supposed to be the mean rich bitch, but then really she's just very nice <laughs> because you can't have her be bad because then it's going to look bad and you're going to get criticism and accusations of racism like what happened in the wednesday series why is the black chick the bully even though she's actually playing the queen bee which means she is the bully she's supposed to be the bully so it's either you don't cast black chicks in those roles or you commit to it when you cast them. Ignore the fact that they're the black chick. Make it so that they're bullies. Sometimes you can even realistically incorporate that into it. Why would an angry ball black chick be a mean-spirited person? There are many reasons. It could be jealousy and resentment. It could be all of that. She's mad about being bald. You know, so they're, you know, but they're not going to go there. They're not going to go there because that's too real life. But then you get these stupid contradictions, these stupid castings that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's also, it would have been funny if after reaching a certain level of success, Gossip Girl had started using the site just as an influencer would have by doing sponsored posts, which could have been a clever commentary on social media marketing. Then you could have gone a step further by addressing stan culture, parasocial relationships, and being chronically online. You mean you were trying the to give them ideas? The original lived in an age before followers, which is what made their popularity so interesting. They hadn't done anything to deserve it. The revival stumbles by trying to justify Julian's popularity by making her an Instagram influencer, but it doesn't seem as though the showrunners have any understanding of how Instagram actually works. <laughs> the character is supposed to have millions of Instagram followers, which is basically celebrity status, and yet she's worrying about engagement and how to get brand deals. That's not how it works. I okay, so here's the thing. I can understand a girl being popular because she is a social media influencer and everyone wants to get in on that you know we all had had that with us in school where you would follow someone and care about someone not because you like them but because maybe they had something you wanted they were popular and you know they, they had a lot of influence and you could get stuff from them i used to be friend with a girl who was very very rich and she would get me stuff 
And that was the only reason I tolerated her. True stuff. <laughs> but again, um, it wouldn't justify her status as a queen bee. I could understand people being protective of her, but I wouldn't, I don't understand her being the queen bee because the queen bee is, well, the queen bee. That's usually Regina George. So you can't have her be both. So it seems that the character is just wrong for the role she was cast in, the role of the queen bee. She could have just been you know, a character who was obsessed with, you know, trying to get in with the in crowd. You know, she feels like a fraud. She doesn't know who she is. She wants to find her, her way in the world. Let's say she was born working class and she's insecure about that. And she uses social media influencer status to kind of secure her place in the world because she feels that without it she will go back to being a nobody and that is the reason she's obsessed with her social media a status and an influencer status because she feels it's all she has going for her i can understand that but this doesn't appear to be the case with this character she she just maybe you know it could be that she feels like a fraud like she doesn't deserve all this that she's gotten but there's no evidence of that that she feels like a fraud there's no evidence of it so this is why it doesn't kind of work <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense for the character whatsoever but anyway let's watch the rest of it carlson or matilda durfrout with a character using their online fame to start a successful side business imagine how interesting it'd be if she hadn't been wealthy from the get-go but her <gasps> online presence and smarts had been able to make her just as rich as the rest of the kids she'd be new money in a world of old money. That would have been an interesting subversion of the original Gossip Girl, which was all about rich kids who had things handed to them. Plus, it made Gossip This is exactly what I just said. Imagine if she was poor, and this was how she justified her relevance, her status. She had to remain on top of the social media influencer sphere because without it, she feels that she would go back to being a nobody. That would make so much more sense instead of her already just from the get-go being rich and popular and having everything. So what is she afraid of? We don't know. She doesn't seem apologetic about her wealth and, and privilege which again is something they could have worked with being that she is biracial black black biracial person you know this is something a lot of wealthy affluent biracial black people feel insecure they feel guilt about their privilege is in a white dominant society so many of them may in fact um you know do certain things to try to prove that they are not quote unquote sellouts that you know they are loyal to black people like so this again if going back to the woke message of the show what if she was that biracial girl who was conflicted about her status and her wealth and all that stuff while the black lives matter things were going on she could you know um put herself out there to try to integrate into the black community and struggle in that regard to you know to really blend into the working class black community with actual black people because that's simply not her upbringing that's not her um that's not how she was raised and that could be one of the reason why she feels insecure about her place in this school because she feels like she's caught between two worlds and she feels with all the social justice warrior stuff going on that she has to pick a side or she has to show interest in her black heritage to prove that you know she is down with the cause so to speak she, they could even have her if they really wanted to be more than surface level about the woke stuff they could have her like you know maybe if they wanted to keep her a bad person she could only pretend to care about the black lives matter you know all that stuff when secretly she doesn't care and she feels conflicted about this inside or not she doesn't feel conflicted she feels conflicted it tears her up inside because secretly she doesn't really care she likes having her privilege she likes having her power or maybe she really does care and she's trying to figure out how she can make that work for her as a you know, wealthy, affluent, black, blackish person in this very white privileged world. All of those would have made the character far more interesting, far more nuanced, if that's what she was dealing with. But these people only care about surface level wokeness. And again, trying to have their cake and eat it too. She is, on the other hand, the queen bee, but then she's doing things that are completely contradictory to her queen bee status, things that 
don't make sense for a queen bee. And it doesn't make her new nuance, it just makes her kind of contradictory. And it just doesn't work. Gossip girl more of a threat as Julian's public image is directly connected to her success. What makes the show truly unbearable to watch is the acting, which sounds <laughs> harsh, I know, but it has to be said. Most of the actors in the series are in the very early stages of their careers, and you can really tell. They're never able to nail the tongue-in-cheek humor that the show is trying to achieve, and the heartfelt moments fall completely flat. Now, I'm not saying that the acting on the original series was Oscar-worthy, but at least they had a range of emotion. They can revival deliver every line like they're ordering a sandwich. I'm not gonna blame woke casting for this, but... Mm. Despite all of these obvious issues, the show took itself way too seriously. The original series wasn't without flaws, but it at least understood where it fit in the grand scheme of things, allowing itself to lean into classic soap opera tropes like secret siblings, wealth-seeking imposters, and fake deaths. This absurdity was part of its charm, but the revival instead opted for believability, something that has no place in a teen drama. Other than being... Okay, uh, maybe believability is not the right term here, or maybe it is. It's just people who think they're being believable, but they're not being believable, which is exactly the problem with woke diversity, which is why I call it woke diversity as opposed to real diversity, because it's not real diversity, but it claims that it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe their version of believability is the equivalent of woke diversity, which is false diversity, false believability, but they think it's real, it's realistic, and maybe that's, that is what she means by that. Shot beautifully and having decent costumes, I don't have many positive things to say about the Gossip Girl revival, so I won't lie, I'm kind of relieved to hear that it's ending. I just hope that whenever Hollywood decides to revisit the franchise, no. they will, that they actually take the time to create an interesting story. Okay, you know, okay, I should probably say maybe this phase of woke reboots will pass. Maybe wokeness will pass. You know, over the last few months, we've seen signs of hope, signs that wokeness is dying down, signs that people are tired of it and people want to move on. So maybe that will happen, you know, um, and in, in that regard, you know, we will stop seeing the abuse of these IPs, these franchises where they are being dug up just so because they come with a built-in audience, you know, awareness, people are familiar with them and they're using nostalgia to, to give themselves an automatic audience. But in fact, it's just, they just whitewash and in, insert their woke diversity on top of the, the original. So it, they're just using these IPs as vehicles to push and promote whatever woke message or agenda they want to push. They don't actually care about the franchises. So maybe, you know, in the future, this phase of woke diversity will pass and people will get back to making just genuine original things that they care about. What did you think of the Gossip Girl revival? I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, so, you know... Mm.